All right. Hello and welcome to another Sales Pop Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM from a rainy San Diego. Who knew it rained here? But it does occasionally. And today I'm joined by Mary Gardner, who is in probably a, a quite a sunny Orlando today. It's actually chilly. <laughs> oh, there you go. We're, we're bucking the trends all over the place. And um, Mary's, a, Mary's a recognized, uh, a nationally recognized uh, speaker, public speaking, speaking coach. She has coached people, sports people, business people. She's worked with people like Billie Jean King, Martina Navratilova, uh, and TV anchors and executives. And so what she's going to talk to us today about is developing charisma and influence and who, you know. God knows I need some help with my charisma, so I'm really interested in this. So, Mary, how can you help? How do you help somebody develop charisma? I mean, influence is one thing, but a lot of people would say it's charisma something you either have or you don't, right? Yeah. Um, so, can you hear me? Okay. Are we? Are yeah, we good? Absolutely. Here you good? I, oh, fantastic! Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's exciting to be here. I love talking charisma and influence and helping people reach their best self. Um, yeah, just a little background. I'm a former celebrity agent, worked at Kepler Speakers in DC. They're mm -hmm. one of the country's largest celebrity speaker bureaus. And then I did PR and then I opened the third com company in the whole US that taught business coaching. So that was back in the late nineties. Um, I was working on Wall Street as a trainer and I've worked with a lot of celebrities just in terms of the speaking. So I was able sure. to see and experience a lot of people at their highest level, learn their stories, learn how they got there, and really just kind of personally study it. Um, when I was in junior high, the reason why I got interested in it is there was a girl that walked in our classroom and everybody turned around and the teacher said, well, you know, there's just some people in the world that people notice. And I realized, I was like, I want to be one of those. <laughs> so I started kind of just studying it and really helping people understand. Uh, so whether it's in um, an astronaut like Mark or Scott Kelly mm -hmm. or uh, an athlete who's going up on stage and wanting to know what their secret sauce is or an entrepreneur or even a student who's trying to do an interview, I, I have a gift and it's really about seeing people at their highest self and un get, getting the clutter out and allowing them to shine. And I really tru truly believe that all of us have a special gift and a purpose in the world. So no matter if you are somebody who's working with special needs children, or if you're an author and on podcasts like yours, um, I, I believe everybody has something in the world that they're supposed to do. And my passion is really helping people get there. So how do you have, so I would say, it's fair to say, I mean, psychology today have some statistic around it about the amount of negative self-talk we indulge in every day. Um, we have a lot of limiting self-belief. So when you, when you start to work with somebody, how do you help them, as you say, you know, bring out their, their best self? How do you see it in them? And how, I mean, it's one thing for you to see it in them, but how do you get the other person to see it in themselves? Yeah, that's a great question because we've got so many negative forces coming mm -hmm. at us from all ends every day. If you turn on social media, we're automatically, we're humans. We're going to compare ourselves mm -hmm. with other people. And, you know, there's a lot in the world right now that um, can make us negative. So yeah. really, I, I am a big subscriber to starting your day off really strong. I have a certain podcast that I listen to every morning. It's actually a meditative type of thing. Um, I, I, program my mind constantly. And I tell my clients, you know, you really have to take control of that attitude. Um, so when I'm coaching somebody, I'm able to reprocess or create a new story for them. For instance, I'm working with a young student right now. She is uh, somebody who's going through the interview process. She was talking about her experience and she was talking it all in about a negative. Um, she said, they never let me do anything beyond mm -hmm. just cleaning up after, you know, whatever. And so I helped her position it in a way that sounded like she was a part of a team and that she, and they were able to create something new. So part of it is reframing what mm -hmm. you are already, you know, what you're already saying. So we go through little exercises, like what were the pros and cons? Now let's make a story on those pro pros and how did you add value and how can it look better? Um, so we do storytelling. That's my background as a publicist. That's what a publicist mm -hmm. does is really help people see it. But the more we speak it and take, you were talking about self-talk, 
so important because we, and we need to be our, our words create our reality for sure. And how we speak about ourselves is so important. And so, um, yeah, we, we do gratitude. We do, I've been keeping a journal since I was 12. So I help them go through a process in the morning of really taking control. And then I think we need little reminders throughout the day. And so having, you know, physical reminders in our mm -hmm. office space about who we are and uh, projecting out, out into the world. And then the other thing is really understanding that when we have the most self-esteem, it's when we're helping and serving others. So right. that's something that's got to be into every single day that we're, we're, that we're alive, basically. Yeah, and it's and, and and unfortunately is it's it's what you're what you're talking about here in many ways is just swimming against a pervasive popular culture out there, as you say. Yeah, okay. Everything is negative. Everybody's people are indulging in in what somebody termed recreational anger, which I thought was a great phrase. Yeah. Terrible <laughs> thing to do, but it's a great phrase and you see it everywhere. And as yeah. you say, it's very easy to start your day off on a bad footing. And it's very, because as humans, right, we're fantastic at filling in the dots, right? So I can see a picture of you standing in front of a yacht and I've decided that you have the best life ever, that you're a multimillionaire and everything. And you may just be posing in front of the yacht as you were. Actually, right? <laughs> but I have, I have filled in the dots. So how, so that's an incredibly powerful force to get people to kind of reorient their thinking, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we have to understand there's some basic um, principles that we have to live by. And so really when you're coaching somebody and all of us have to understand what our values are, because people have a different message about the world. I was thinking this morning about how I was listening to podcasts and so many of these podcasters who are like at the highest level thinking of the, you know, and I'm thinking we all look at Hollywood, like they are yeah. the biggest and the best and all these now famous authors and experts who are professing all the science that's happening. But you know what? Take that against a farm wife and a, and a, and a farmer yeah. in Iowa who have eight kids and they're struggling to make ends meet and they have dinner together every night. And you know what? Really happiness is about connection. It's about doing a work that you're proud of and that you are in the flow. And it's about having a strong community. And so you take somebody who's like that highest level and wow, versus the farmer or somebody who's just an average person, but they're happier. And so what I help people do is really understand that our values are all individual and mm -hmm. that what makes up our life is going to be completely different, even from your brothers and sisters and your parents. And it's important that you know who you are. That's why, yeah. you know, journaling every day and prayer, meditating, uh, you know, visualization about who you want to be, even things that people talk about on a regular basis. If you have a system to do it, it helps you shine more. Yeah, and I love what you just said there about community because one of my soapboxes recently, one of my many soapboxes, but one of my <laughs> um, one of one of my big ones recently is that to your point is you can spend your day ranting and raving about macro global issues. You can go post yeah. online. You can sit around with your buddies and talk politics over beers and get really angry, or you could just say, "Okay, the biggest impact I have is being the best." Uh, being the best person I can be, being the best partner, spouse, you know, to your significant other, being the best parent, just being the best person in your community. And, mm -hmm. if, and that's a huge impact as opposed to, guess what, posting on social media and ranting and raving over beers, zero impact. Oh, isn't that the truth? I so agree with that. And social media has its place. I sure. do think that humans are getting better and stronger as a result of social media. We have a lot of knowledge that we wouldn't have mm -hmm. had else, you know, without it. So certainly it's a, it's a better, we can use it and utilize it. But in terms of positivity and negativity, I think the natural human condition is we're going to lean towards negative. I just yep. think that's normal. And I mm -hmm. think it takes real discipline and a strategy to become someone that's a positive force in the world. Um, I work with inspiring leaders. That's one of the things that a lot of people do and I, you know, are trying to be, and people don't know what that means. What is inspiring right. leadership? But it really is a series of 
communication tools that people start to learn. And when we understand that if we are a, an, a worker and trying to get to manager or manager trying to get to leader or leader trying to get to CEO or CEO try to get to author, author try to get to speaker, speaker try to get to professional speaker, professional speaker to try to get on TV or podcast, there's different competencies along the way. And humans love to be challenged. And so if we're able to see just right in front of us, what are the couple of steps just right in front of us that can keep us moving forward? And I think there's so much available that we lose focus. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that can really diminish our charisma is because, and our influence is if we're all over the place and they say for the first time in 200 years, our brains have changed. And so mm -hmm. everybody has ADD. It's a complete, it's all, it, it's happening everywhere. So the ability to take a step back and to set your your time instead of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. I think, um, I mean, you've just touched on a few other soapboxes of mine, but one of them is is focus. And I do, and I hear all the time people saying, oh, this is, we're so busy. This is the busiest we've ever been in our lives, right? And I go, no, is it though? Or is it the most distracted we've ever been? And I think that's the oh, point amen. that you're making. It is, it is the more, just, it's, it's the most distracted we've ever been. And yes, focus. And the thing is that fo people struggle with focus because people don't like to make choices. Because if you focus on something, you're making a choice to unfocus on other things. And, I, and that, to your point, you have to figure out what's important. But, but yeah, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about uh, focus and why. And this is something I've always, I, I've talked a lot about and worked a lot on. It's like people struggle with focus because they just don't like making choices. Oh, yeah, there are so many choices. And I do believe that sometimes it's okay to not have focus as we're going out and we're exploring. Mm -hmm. And maybe you give yourself a month to really, if you've got the resources to be able to do it again, if we're, uh, you've got to have your needs met. But if you go out and you say, all right, so for the next 30 days, I'm going to explore a lot of different things and see what fits. You try things on. If it fits, maybe you go do volunteering. Maybe you do temporary work. Maybe you go and have meetings or interviews with entrepreneurs and see how they work. Maybe you go on LinkedIn and have questions, you know, or have mm -hmm. interviews or conversations with people that look like something that you want to do. So right. exploratory time is great. And I think that that's where we're in such an advantage of having such a small world now. I meet people all over the world through LinkedIn. I love it, you know? So I love having access to nearly anybody. Um, but then it comes time to pick a lane and yep. then to stay in your lane and to mm -hmm. make, make an impact really about influence is is continuing on a path and keeping a moniker or keeping a brand in front of you and learning all that you can and then turning around and giving the baton to people behind you and sharing what you're learning. And that's really how you create that influence that we talked about. And the more you learn and the more you share, share, the more people are going to want to be around you. And that develops that natural instinct of magnet, you know, being a magnetic person. And people, people enjoy that. People like being around people that are excited about what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And and the thing is that when you do make a decision and you do pick a lane and everything, you, you still have to understand that it's not a straight lane, right? It's a meandering one at times <laughs> and it's going to it's going to have some sharp turns that you're not expecting, but you have to have the be able to stay the course. It's a quick interesting question I just wanted to ask you. So when you go through this work with somebody and you maybe you get them to a point and they're feeling good. Um, one thing that often creeps in, and uh, this is from another interview I did, uh, the person, um, I can't remember her name now, but came up with the term, the imposter syndrome, right? And I think that happens to people a lot. You know, they do all of this and maybe they come to their first speaking engagement or whatever it is and suddenly they go, oh my goodness, people are going to see right through me. I really don't have this level of experience. Why would anyone listen to me? And they just completely demotivate themselves. Yeah. Well, that's um, the imposter syndrome is probably mm -hmm. is, is correct and right. And there's books on it. Um, and it's, it's really about developing confidence and then mm -hmm. also having confidence to say, you don't know what you're doing. And one, I remember Carrot Top, the comedian one time I yeah. was watching him and I'm, I'm a former celebrity agent. So I got to see a lot of performers mm -hmm. and this this was the first time I'd ever seen someone do this. And he had a panic attack on stage. And he right. said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't, oh, oh, where was I? Where was I? I had a panic attack. And I realized, I was like, if he can do it and he's getting paid several thousand mm -hmm. dollars to do this performance and he lost himself and got confidence issues right there and was able to say to everybody, hey, help me out. 
And that was the biggest lesson to me. And I've worked with celebrities who want to go out and they've got scrutiny from the media. People are watching them. And I've talked to and helped people understand. People want to know what makes you laugh. People want to know what makes you cry. People want to see the human side of you. So taking away that perfection, being excellent at what you do means preparation. That's important. And preparation is good. You should never go out into that environment and wing it. You should be working and practicing hard to look and sound good and to be prepared. But you don't have to be perfect. People don't like perfect people. So that's, Mm -hmm. you know, it, it takes the pressure off a little bit. And generally speaking, everybody wants you to do well. I mean, there might be a few sociopaths who don't, but generally yeah. speaking, your you know, your audience, everybody wants you to do well, right? They want to be they want Absolutely. to be impressed. They don't want to see you crash and burn. Oh no. And and the thing that I do have a hard time with is right now in the media, and I want to compliment you. You haven't done this a lot. And I just put a little rant of my own on Twitter today hmm. that everybody that's at the top right now, and you could go and I'm not going to name any any names mm-hmm. because hopefully I'll be on all of their shows, but they all use the word right, 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 right. And yeah. I'm like, okay, you're all listening to each other and you're boring me now. And what that tells me is that you have not worked with a speech coach to help you be your best self. Maybe you have content, but you don't have delivery. And so I, I think if somebody's going to put themselves out in the public and they want to yeah. be, if they want to be treated well, they're going to have to also take their own, their own medicine. And I see almost all of them at the top. It's, it, it's driving me. It's like the nails on the chalkboard. And so I, in my own clients, I'll, I'll mark, I'll do a little mark. Oh, you did it 50 times during our one hour conversation. (laughs) And I I just say, Hey, put a rubber band on your arm. If you're doing something that's a deficit and you can do better then try better and try get a strategy to get rid of it. So anyway, congratulations for you. You're not doing it. Way to go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> good, because I was right, looking around right. for I was looking around for an elastic band. So good. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. But but what I find with that is I think that I think um, there's a deeper thing going on there that you uh, that you just mentioned, and that is the fact that people aren't really having conversations, right? Uh, all right, I nearly said right there, but people aren't having conversations. They're more they're saying something and they're providing you an opportunity to agree with them, right? Instead of, instead of offering you the opportunity to say what you think. So I always feel like when people do that, when people put right or, um, you know, correct in front of something, they don't, they're not, they're not looking for you to argue or show a contrary point of view. They want you to agree with them. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and you'll start to notice now that I've brought it out and you may have already noticed that people are doing it in such a, it's such a condensed way. They're mm-hmm. saying it so many times that now I'm understanding, well, that person hasn't had speech coaching. That person mm-hmm. hasn't. So I, I am looking at public personas and charisma. And now I'm at the place where, and I've started, I've started looking because I've started talking. The other thing that started happening a lot was people were using the F word so many times that it got so overused. Mm-hmm. And so I, I started it and I know some of the big uh, speakers out there actually picked up on what I was saying and that will go out of our society. So I can promise you in the next year, that whole thing, right? It'll be, it'll be gone. It'll be something good, else. Good. But uh, <laughs> and, and, on top of the culture, trying to make good. everybody feel, sound as good, good as they can. And I'm glad, and I think uh, I, I find, I just find the whole swearing thing. Mm-hmm. I just find that it's, do you remember when you were when you were a teenager or a young child? You remember it was really clever to use a swear yeah. word, especially in Ireland. Unfortunately, it's like part of the language, and it, it, yeah. it's. I'm so removed from it now that I find it difficult when I go back. Yeah. But but and I, when I hear adults on TV or speeches throwing in f bombs and stuff, it just reminds me. I just go, I'm not impressed. Like right. I'm impressed by I'm impressed by your content. I'm not impressed by you throwing a swear word in. It doesn't make you cool. It doesn't make me relate to you more. It actually turns me off in a big way because I'm reminded of an adolescent swearing for the first time. Absolutely. I always go back to and um, one of my favorite all time comedians was Jerry Seinfeld. I used yeah. to book him just starting, and Jerry Seinfeld made. It, it was creative. And so being able to do a presentation and a comic bit without having the, you know, a raunchy language. Yeah. And 
I think what harmed us most was that there was a study that came out over the past few years that said, the more you cuss, the more intelligent you are. So it gave a lot of people just the, the free load, go ahead, do it. And, um, and I think, you know, we did used to look at our, our celebrity athletes and as role models. And now it's, you know, you really have to look inside to your own community for role models. I think that the world is getting smaller and smaller. Of course, we're able to access people around the world, yeah. but to be very specific because what goes in comes out. And so if yeah. you are training yourself with bad language and you're training yourself with, with content that isn't positive, that's what's going to come out. And that's the other thing is really being aware of your environment. And that's why it's important to stay around very positive people. Um, when you have people that are in your line of influence, whether it's a boss, a, a coworker, there are things you can do from energy medicine wise, which yeah. I do sometimes, but also your intention of the morning of sending them blessings because there's also science that shows you can control or change their attitude as well. When you start to put out good vibes, um, there's a lot of, 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 of information about that. So really keeping yourself positive in all aspects, radio, television, social media, your friends, your bosses, your computers, your work, everything. Um, so then you can live it at a high self. I know it's hard to do, um, yeah. but it's doable. It's, it, it's hard to do, but it's doable. And it's, and it's very much needed. I think today it's very, very much needed. And I worry about, especially as you know, because we have, it's an election year and regardless of what, where you sit on the spectrum, we're yeah. going to be bombarded with such negative nonsense from all sides that I just think there, we have to reach a tipping point when more positive needs to rise up and that we can learn to agree to disagree again. Oh, I so agree. Absolutely. It's, um, it's going to take some people to stand up and to be role models for us to show us what that looks like. And uh, that's my and that's why I love meeting people like you who are actually doing really good work in the world to your set of people, because it's the ripple of Effect. The yeah. more you go out and you show what you have and and inspire people, it'll inspire people to inspire people. And so it's it's kind of good versus evil. You got to kind of choose your lane. Otherwise, it, you know, yeah. you're going to be out in the ocean and just, <laughs> you know, floating and, and not making a decision is a decision. You'll let yeah. the world determine what you're going to be. Yeah. And, and I love that. We just end on that point. But I love that, too, because uh it's when people complain about being stuck or whatever, I always say, well, no, no, that, that, that's a choice. It's that it's not that you haven't made a choice to move on. You've just made a choice to stay where you are. And if you own that, you have to own that. You have yeah. to own that. And it's not my fault. It's not anybody else's fault. It's everything is pretty much within your own control. Um, obviously, there are circum some circumstances that will be outside your control. But there's a lot of things within your control that you can make changes if you want to. Oh, you're so right. And you're right about the one thing that sometimes there are things that are out of our control and, uh, sure. and, you know, sometimes they're health issues. Sometimes I was, sure. a, my, my son was diagnosed on the autism spectrum when he mm -hmm. was young. There were many years where it wasn't my time to shine because sure. my, my role was to be there for him and to be a parent and an advocate. And I learned a lot about that. And now what's, as I look back over those times I wasn't effective as, as much in my job is that now I'm able to help other people through it, right. uh, whether it's through interviews or families with food and different things like that. So there's always a purpose, even if we're in a place where we're stuck and it's hard to have faith, but if we do just have faith, you know what, one day this will be useful. And so it's all about, you know, understanding that and staying in that good conversation. Yep. All about putting one foot in front of the other. Amen on a daily that. basis. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Mary, this has been fantastic. I really enjoyed this conversation. Mary Gardner, marygardner.com. Uh, all of Mary's information will be in her bio. So you'll be able to find uh, and, and connect with Mary. Um, listen, this has been fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Have a really great day. I appreciate yeah, it. You you too. John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.